When it comes to iPhones that present themselves with no power, and it's not something as simple as a battery replacement, especially when you hook it up to a power supply and you get an immediate draw on that power without prompting the phone to boot, you know that it's going to be a short on one of the main power rails. Now diagnosing a short might seem complicated and for some overwhelming, but once you understand the concept of how to track down a short, fixing a device with a short like this is much simpler than you might think. In this video, I'm going to be going over a basic step-by-step -step process on how to do this. The process that I'm gonna show you today is applicable across all of the iPhones. Today, I've got an iPhone 10 that's presenting itself with an issue like that. And I'm gonna show you my method step-by-step -step, and how I go about diagnosing and fixing the issue. Let's get started. All right, so right here I have an iPhone 10 that's not powering on. Using my DC power supply, let's go ahead and connect it up. And when I just simply put power to it without actually uh, prompting it to boot, I immediately get a draw. You can see you're heating up quite a bit right there on the flex cable. Not getting any heat signatures anywhere other than right there. Let's see if we can figure out what is going wrong with this device. Add some isopropyl alcohol. Help loosen up those stickers. Grabbing my multimeter, run a couple tests here on the pins. And I'm getting a normal reading there, normal on that pin, and normal here as well. All right, so here we're gonna take a look at the battery connector. Now I was getting a little bit of a high reading instead of 0.336, I was getting 0.4, but that's uh, typically with intolerance. But if we follow this battery line, pulls us over here. So right now we are on PP bat VCC, and that converts over into uh, VDD main. All right, so it basically comes down to this. We've got our battery and we've got our battery connector. And that battery connector, when the battery's connected, it goes over into a charging IC like Tigris with its MOSFET. And in the circuit there, they attach themselves to a VDD main line. So we have two lines so far. We have our battery line and our VDD main line. And we've got a bunch of different components coming off of that VDD main line. And at some point we're gonna have a circuit for that'll convert into VDD boost and go off to a bunch of other components. But on our VDD main line, we're gonna have tons of components and a good portion of those are capacitors. Now those capacitors are connected to the, that data line VDD main. And on the other side, we have ground coming off of them. But if we get a component that shorts out and connects to ground, and all of a sudden, all the power that's on that line is gonna start going there to ground. So everything from our battery that goes through the connector is gonna go to the charging IC circuit and basically heat up that MOSFET because it's not physically connected without it without the circuit being prompted to work. So we're gonna see a draw on the MOSFET. So we need to basically look for a component that's on uh, that VDD main line that we found a short. We can inject power here onto the data, data line. And when we do that, it'll light up the component with heat. All that voltage is gonna go to the component that's, that's shorted to ground and it'll actually physically get hot. So we'll be able to see that on a thermal camera. So it really comes down to basically three different lines that when we have a, a short that's preventing the device booting. Could be on the uh, battery line, the VDD main line and VDD boost. One of those three lines, basically between all of the iPhone models is where we're gonna find an issue if we have a no power device somewhere uh, on this. So being able to isolate those lines from each other and figuring it out, that's that's the, the goal here is to find, is it on the battery line? So we test the battery, 
it's not on the battery line because we're not getting a short to ground. So then we test on VDD main, and in this case, we've got a short to ground. And if that wasn't the case, then we would be looking on our boost line for that issue. And that way we can isolate and solve the issue. So if I just find a random component that I can measure, say this guy right here, we should be able to determine if uh, BDD main itself is um, as a short or not. Here I can test one side, let's see. All right, we've got continuity to ground and other side, the same thing. So we definitely have uh, short to ground on VDD main. So there is a chance that the short is up top. Um, I really don't like to remove the shield here and I doubt that it's one of these components. I'm gonna guess that it's something on the back side so we need to separate the, uh, the logic boards uh, to, to figure this one out. So that is our next step. We'll slice through the sticker here and wait for a little bit of movement in the logic board. Putting the little braces on there just to hold the board down. Looks like I'm getting some movement here. Yep, and it's wanting to come up, so. I'll take it off. And we'll let those cool down. So now we're just gonna take this and we're gonna oh, test again and see if a VDD main still is short. All right. So we've kind of isolated it to being here on the top board. I'm just gonna double check uh, VDD main on the lower board. And we can test that right here. And we're getting a normal reading. These are all VDD main. And so yeah, we're good on the, the bottom board. So we've got to isolate the issue here on the top. So we're gonna take the voltage down to just over one volt here. I'm gonna inject some voltage into VDD main and see if we get anything on the thermal camera. Here we got VDD main. So let's run on off of, let's say this guy right here. I get a draw there. Let's see what heats up. Hmm, didn't see anything. Let's check the back, the top side here. Looks like I can run off of the the connector here. Nothing's really apparent up here. Starting to get some, so let's flip it back over and see what we have in that area. We got some stuff going on up here. So I'm gonna inject voltage into this guy. And there we go, I saw right in this area. What do we have there? Mm, not clear, let's try that again. It's right there. So you got this guy right here. I think it's this guy. See, we've got direct continuity across him. That doesn't mean he's bad, but let's go ahead and pull it off anyway and see what we got going on here. So, just gonna go ahead and push him off. Okay. And let's test him across and see if that's the guy. And sure enough, we do have a short across him, and if we check, those pads there, 
Let's see if we get a reading. A ground. And we still have a short. Interesting. All right, we're still getting heat in that one spot. Be that cap, yeah. A little hiding gun inside there. So this cap as well. Oh, and I pulled the pad. And sure enough, that was the, that was it. That's it, it's also short. So let's test and see if our shorts finally cleared. Obviously I pulled a pad, which is not never good, but I just don't want to heat up this board. And do we have short or is it gone? Ground and no more short. There we go. All right. All right. So let me go around and pick out all of the much as this of this thermal paste as I can. If you leave this in here, at least if you leave the bulk of it in there, it creates a, it can create a teetering effect where the, the boards don't want to actually sit back down. So I am going to remove it, or at least most of it, so that I don't have any resistance from the boards wanting to keep, reunite. We'll get our, our board warmer again, turn it back on. We're going to let this warm up. Got a couple little um, spacers that are standing up. And as soon as it gets hot enough, I'm going to carefully nudge the uh, nudge them back down. All right, we're liquid. I'm going to turn it back off so that it can cool down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and gently set down the board line it up nice and good and we'll turn it back on and now we'll just watch for it to naturally suck down back into place making sure it stays in alignment solid all right now we'll just turn it off and let it cool back down lift it up and gently set it there let it slowly cool down. Now that it's cooled down quite a bit, I'm gonna gently lift it off. So now let's connect up a power supply again. And let's see, I don't automatically get a draw, which is good. Let's see if it powers on now. With you, I don't ever feel calm. And we got an Apple logo holding down the battery connector. It kind of popped off. That's what that was. And it's like we've got a proper boot sequence. Let's see if it comes all the way on. And I think it will. All right, I'm going to go and reflow it one more time because we don't have any touch. And touch is on the bottom board. So that just means that I didn't get a good solid solder between the two. So I'm going to go and add a little bit of flux with my nifty real life 062A gun here. We're just going to add some flux around the, the border. Flux will help prevent the solder from oxidizing as it heats up and cools down. It'll also clean the solder as the solder liquefies. It'll it'll knock off the uh, the oxidation that's already there. So flux is definitely your your best friend when doing uh, when soldering. We'll get our platform back out, set it back down. We're gonna let this heat up a little bit more than last time so that it ensures that it definitely seats down in there. Gets a nice solid solder joint. So I've got sp the spacer still in there. So I'm gonna leave just the weight of the tweezers just kind of holding down that bottom edge. Shouldn't do any type of squeeze out or anything because I have the spacer still in there. But I'm gonna let it cool down like this. I let it, I let it get up to about 200 degrees uh, uh, Celsius. So this should, this should definitely, that should have gotten it to the point where it's liquid. I'll let this cool down for the next 10, 15 minutes and we should be good. Nice and tight. We should be good. Let's connect it up again and see if this time we have a touch. We automatically still have zero, so we'll go ahead and hit the power button. 
With you, I don't ever feel calm. Apple logo. Play with me like cats and a string. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever want to give me wings. You don't ever want to set me free. Oh, and we get touch back. All right, we have our touch. Let's go put it back together. All right, I'm gonna put back these stickers. Let's install the board back inside the phone. Let's reconnect the display. All right, and then we can basically close up the phone at this point. This one should be good to go. Let's just let it charge up for a bit. All right. We are coming on now, finally. Been charging for about five minutes or so. And we are back on. And we're fixed. So as you've just seen, we were successful in repairing this iPhone. Issues like this occur in a lot of iPhones. And the majority of these repairs end up being something as simple as a capacitor going bad, which means this type of repair is a pure labor repair. Very rarely do you actually have to buy components for this type of repair. You do, however, need to have the tools to be able to do it. Well worth the investment. There will be a link in the description where you can find all of the tools that you will need for repairs like this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video. People can change your life. A few friends with intent can help you feel alive. Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time. Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life. They'll try to kick you while you're down.